I'm just going to take a little bit of time out now and think a bit more about um, just step away from the WikiLeaks example a little bit and talk about how we go about finding literature that allows us to take a topic that we're interested in researching and turn it into a research question. So we're going to be uh, just just being a bit clearer about how we are using the topic of WikiLeaks and social change to explore more general research skills in terms of how to find the ideas that you need to find to turn your interests into a research project. So just skipping through all of this stuff again, just quickly, just excuse me. So um, let's step back from WikiLeaks a little bit and, and, and just think about um, the what it represents in a bit more of a generic kind of way. So suppose we were we are interested in researching WikiLeaks um, as an example of how media changed the world. And we the first thing we might do is we might sort of sit back and, and think about WikiLeaks and and as I say, one of the things that becomes quite clear if you think about WikiLeaks is it isn't really about technology. The story of WikiLeaks is, um, well, it's literally a drama, of course. Julian Assange um, is a figure of immense public interest. There's even actually been um, a fictional um, docudrama about him featuring Benedict Cumberbatch, right? So if we think about WikiLeaks, we can think about uh, Julian Assange, and here are some images of Julian Assange over the years. Uh, we can see him as a as really a kind of a figure around which some um, some really dramatic um, political uh, intrigues have been really kind of brought to life of the last decade or so. Um, so we can see kind of Julian Assange as being a figure where we think about the nature of truth, justice, international power, all of these sorts of things. Um, so we know that WikiLeaks isn't just about media technologies, right? So this is a, makes it a good example to say, well, um, in our first step in, in, in researching a media topic is we step back and say, well, what is this really about? I know what the public thinks is about. I know about how these things are discussed in public, but what what's really going on here when I'm looking at the story about media and social change? How do I go about answering that question? Well, the first thing we do is we read. So what you're going to do here, and what I'm going to um, um, what I'm going to upload is I'm going to upload um, a video that shows you how to find. Um, research resources related to your topic uh, via a platform called Communications and Mass Media Complete. And Communications and Mass Media Complete is a fantastic resource where you can find um, what thousands and thousands of, of, of scholars have written about your particular topic. And what I'm going to do is um, elsewhere, I'm going to upload uh, a video on how to use that resource, how to find resources that are useful for you. And I want you to watch that uh, before next week and see what you come up with, okay? Then once you've gathered a range of ideas about, um, a range of ideas or a range of readings about your particular topic, um, what you need to do is read each of these uh, scholarly resources and try and find the key argument and the concept in each particular article. So when you're reading scholarly research, uh, and we're already practicing this on perusal, right? Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify what in particular is the key argument at this point. And a, a really handy trick here is if you can kind of find a key quote that really summarizes what you think the main argument is. And the trick to test your comprehension is to find that key quote and then explain it in your own words. Then um, the other thing you need to do is as you're reading the materials that you've gathered in the previous step that I've shown you, you look, need to look for patterns of similarity and difference. Where do your authors agree on why a topic matters and where are they, dis uh, and where are they uh, disagreeing? 
And then you need to think about what kinds of incidents they're talking about, what kind of methods they're using in doing their research. And we're noting all of these things down. And then what we'll do later on is we'll make sort of individual annotations of each article and then we'll put them together into a literature review. So, for an example, um, if we think about WikiLeaks, we can look at WikiLeaks um, and think about it as a, a good example that allows us to uh, examine different uh, models of media power, one focusing on technology and the other on something called political economy. And political economy is really kind of the question of how um, media produce change through interacting with other sources of social power, um, the state, um, the economic system, other businesses, those sorts of things. So, for example, if we look at WikiLeaks, one of the things that we can do is we can see very quickly that WikiLeaks is an example that dramatizes two different versions of media power. One is media power, media power is change, the idea that media affect the world by changing the world. But the other is a kind of a, I suppose, almost a counterintuitive thing, the idea that media has the most power when they are making no change. What that means is, is that media often affect the world through maintaining the power bases of people who already have it. Um, so actually resisting change is a really powerful sort of media effect, sort of the idea that um, media are used to make sure that people keep on believing the same sorts of ideas, keep on doing the same sorts of things, don't change anything about the way that they view the world at all. This is a very, very powerful form of media influence. And we can see this um, in regard to, uh, to WikiLeaks. If we read the literature on WikiLeaks, one of the things that we see is that there are different points of view on WikiLeaks. So someone like uh, Brian McNair, who is a very well-respected political communication scholar, um, has written that WikiLeaks really represents the power of digital technologies to allow ordinary people to really overthrow established centers of political power. So McNair very much thought of WikiLeaks as being a representation of how digital technologies make the world a more democratic place because they make it easier for ordinary people to become active in politics in ways that really, really make a change. So that's one important idea about why WikiLeaks matters. Um, but if we look at the Hassian reading, where Hassian talks about the domestication of media technologies, um, what Hassian is really arguing in our key reading from this week is that the most remarkable thing about WikiLeaks, and particularly the collateral murder video, was that it didn't change anything at all. Here we had an image of, uh, of a, a American, uh, of American military operations killing innocent civilians and journalists. And the most remarkable thing about that story is that the whole world saw it with our own eyes and nothing changed. Uh, and this is representation of the picture I've got here is of a guy called Storman Norman w uh, Schwarzkopf, who was um, uh, an American general during the first Gulf War of 1991, who really made his reputation through his media handling capabilities. Schwarzkopf was something of a PR genius. He knew how to uh, talk to media. He knew how to... Um, uh, persuade or you know encourage to provide journalists with information that that really meant um, that a uh, that the point of view of the US armed forces became really well represented and even dominant in global news reporting about um, the uh, how the Gulf War was going and this is a precursor to the sort of media management that Hassan was talking about in his article about the way that um, the US uh, military uh, has a sophisticated PR machine that means that you can take apparently um, shocking um, um, sort of uh, uh, investigative journalism 
or investigative uh, evidence such as that represented in the collateral murder video and actually make the government make the uh, the audience see something completely different from what was see being seen in the minds of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning. So this is an example. So what we have here then is when we're looking at WikiLeaks is we can use WikiLeaks as an example to examine two different models of media power, one focusing on change and the other focusing on the lack of change. And we'll be looking more at that in the next video.